Good afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs Big Bo and Parkway RV Center. Got another nice fifth wheel we're going to review today. Um, this is a Heartland Bighorn, a 2015 3750 FL. Really neat floor plan, guys. For those of you who follow RVs, you know this is a sister brand to a Keystone Montana. In fact, uh, same floor plan as 3750-2015 Keystone Montana. So, um, you know, if you're looking for one, then you settle for the other. The colors on the inside may be a little bit different between one and the other, but that's pretty much it. There's a 3750 FL, five slides. This is a front lounge fifth wheel, extreme four seasons, R38 insulation. You've got three slides on one side, two on the other. In very, very nice condition. You got the frameless windows. Uh, you got the 12 gallon DSI water heater. Uh, got the full body paint cap, cap on it, fiberglass cap. Good looking fifth wheel guys all the way around. It is heavy and it is big. So uh, dry weight's 13,700 pounds and 41 feet nine inches is the total length bumper to bumper. Now guys, if you're looking to buy something like this for a residential use, we do offer nationwide delivery for $1.50 a loaded mile one way. And we have trucks that can handle this thing, no problem. You know, we use one ton dually trucks for, for big fifth wheels like this. Does have the optional six point hydraulic level up leveling system. So you push a button, levels itself up got the power awning uh, with LED lights, LED porch light, got the furnace on inside because it is pretty uh, frigid outside right now. You know, this unit does have the full pass-through outside storage in the front and in the back, and I'll show you how. Got a little fading on this side, but on this door right here, but not bad. Hang on, I'm gonna, you can look in here and uh, the other one does the exact same thing right beside it. So you get a lot of extra exterior storage because what they did is they actually took the rear bedroom and put you some extra steps and built the floor up to give you this extra storage. And that helps insulate your RV too. Of course, full heated enclosed underbelly, which you gotta run your furnace to, to use to protect your tanks and plumbing. Double axles. Show you the other side real quick before I, my lips go numb. <laughs> Hang on there. Pick it up the one next to us here. And your three slides over here. Got that furnace going on full blown panic mode. And these are just the back side to your um, storage bays and of course 50 amp electrical service. Four seasons. Definitely what you need right now if you're gonna be staying in one or camping this time of year, but you'll be surprised these well insulated units like this, how well they can keep you warm. Let's go up inside. Of course, these are designed. You can use them recreationally, of course, but they are designed with full-time RVers in mind. And, oh, yeah. It's amazing how good that heat feels. And we get this door. We'll pause this for just a second. I, the door actually got, accidentally got caught on the door catch. Hang on. Sorry about that guys. Normally I just leave the door open, but not today. It's too cold. Uh, beautiful interior. I went ahead and brought the extra chairs out from the closet and put them in here with the leaf so you can see how big the uh, table gets. 
you can set this table that middle leaf is removable and you can put these two chairs they fold up into a closet and just have eating service for two but i got it set for four beautiful corian countertops this is the middle kitchen by the way do have the residential refrigerator uh you do have oven three burner stove top that looks great high point microwave convection oven you even got a wine rack holder you know it's fancy when you got one of those and beautiful front lounge lots of lighting in here open the fridge up looks good i don't i hadn't turned it on yet um but again it is cold once i figure out how you turn this darn thing on <laughs> hey guys we guarantee it to work i'm just not there we go that's how you turn it on i knew i'd get it eventually um of course we guarantee it to work and that is all electric so what's nice about that is that in an hour hour and a half it'll be ready to put food in now if this was an rv refrigerator you're talking five or six hours seven hours or longer to get it to operating temp where this one does it in way less time holds twice the amount of food half the price to replace if it ever goes bad and of course you got a window if you're right there if you ever need to change it out you can Take the window out of the track and remove it. Take it out that way and put it back in and reinstall your window. It's actually not complicated at all. But being a 15, you shouldn't have to worry about that for a long time because those do last a lot longer than RV refrigerator freezers do. But yeah, very nice cabinetry in here. You know, the, the Heartland does use handcrafted cabinets. I don't know if the Montanas do or not, but I know the Bighorns do amish built hand built cabinets so very very nice cabinets um again just beautiful corian countertops everywhere and look at this front lounge i mean this is a great conversation area up here you've got a fireplace that is doubles as an electric heater if you need or you can set it just for the effect you've got a large television um, you've got two opposing sleeper sofas, so you can technically sleep four people up here. You've got very nice theater seating facing the television, and these are, I didn't turn them on because I'm doing this real quick because it's getting almost the end of the day and I got an hour drive ahead of me to go home in the snow and ice. But um, you do have heated massaging chairs built into the theater seating. And this is a regular profile fifth wheel, so you can pretty much walk front to back without stooping over. Uh, this is just a little removable island or whatever you want to call it. So very, very nice. Got some butterflies there. Very nice front lounge. No smoke or pet odors in here. And good, yeah, that heat works. I can honestly, personally promise you the heat feels great and it works <laughs> the, the propane furnace does have two whisper quiet ducted roof hairs which really can circulate let's see the whisper quiet system not only are quiet hence the word whisper quiet but they actually circulate they've got a they've got some kind of, and i'm not like i said i'm not a factory trained bighorn or montana sales expert by no means but they have some kind of booster fan built into the ductwork so you get more airflow and cooler temperatures in the summertime which right now i don't mean a hill of beans but when it's 30 degrees outside but it will get hot again i promise all right we're gonna look at the bathroom next and this is Got a nice large stand-up shower. The skylight I don't think was really necessary except bring in some natural light, but it looks great. It does have a vent fan. You do have the uh, porcelain china RV toilet. Matching Corian vanity top, medicine cabinet. Lots of lighting, looks like the previous owners left some few decorations in here that we're leaving in. 
and the fact that you don't see any bleach spots like from yellow bleach yellow in the shower means this thing hasn't spent a ton of time out in the element so somebody so right there tells me it's not been a live-in and second that tells me that it's probably been kept with a cover or under a shed or the, the this skylight's been been covered up from the elements keep the sun from bleaching that shower a bright yellow which it doesn't hurt anything when that happens but that just means it's been outside more than normal and again guys remember that outside storage in the back you do have a few steps up to the bedroom because this has to go over that storage compartment and we're going to step up here into the back and this is a huge bedroom by the way and you do have a king island bed and you've got a television back here and you're you got opposing slides back here it's a ton of space you've got mini closets tv you've got drawers at the bottom to hold your drawers <laughs> and whatever else you want to put in there storage underneath the bed you've got another closet right here some overhead storage up top i'm six foot four and again guys this is probably the closest my head hits the ceiling and i'm still got quite a bit of space here so definitely comfortable for taller people and then of course this is your washer and dryer hookups now it doesn't have one so that's something you can put in later if you have a need for it but it will take a stack unit. i would rather buy one without it because well, i'm not a big fan of them anyway but if you're going to live in one i can see how they would be a, a nice luxury to have but the fact that it doesn't have one tells me this is more than likely again not a live-in fifth wheel there's nothing long wrong with a live-in fifth wheel but you got to keep in mind average person uses a rv recreationally about a month and a half a year on average 45 days all right when you live in one 24 7 you're putting about seven or eight years of recreational use on the rv for every year that you're living in it so time you live in one for say three years i mean you're putting 25 26 years worth of regular recreational use so you're going to have a lot more wear and tear um, on everything and there's nothing wrong with buying one that was a live-in unit as long as it's priced accordingly uh to the wear and tear you know you don't want to spend the same price for one that's been used recreationally its whole life versus one that's been lived in its whole life you want to be in the lived in unit for quite a bit less because it's going to have a lot more wear and tear to it so um it's kind of like buying a i mean it's kind of okay put it to you like this guys do you want to spend the same amount of money for a used car with 200,000 miles or one with 50,000 miles same year make and model would you pay the same amount for one with 200 versus 50 it's kind of the same concept between buying a fifth wheel that's been used recreationally and one that's been lived in for years it's kind of the same concept if that makes sense you know obviously if you buy the one with 200,000 miles you want to buy it for quite a bit less than the one for, than the one's price with 50,000 miles and um i like it guys i think it's a neat neat fifth wheel um good price on it and um it's a big country so definitely it's uh, like i said it's a sister brand to a montana 3750 fl i mean i don't know which i mean i like both of them the colors in this one versus the montana yeah i probably like this furniture better you know i'm not big on I, I am personally not big on leather furniture but i do like cloth furniture and, and cloth seats and cars and things like that i'm kind of weird about that but so I, that that is one thing i do like about it between the montana and this because most montanas do come with the leather or the pleather furniture and they have that flaking furniture problem most of the heartlands big horns came with the cloth sofas that didn't obviously have that problem because they're not they're not pleather uh this looks like it's recently been changed this theater seating 
So I'm going to assume that the previous owners put that in here, I guess because the other one had the flaking furniture problem. So um, different ways of, uh, you know, which is not a bad thing. At least they went back with something that would have been in it from the factory, maybe just a different color. But, you know, this is a nice fifth wheel. Very comfortable, very warm right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, for the money, this thing is nice. Sorry about that, guys. Had some customers who wanted to see it um, right here at closing. So anyway, what I was getting at, guys, this unit is priced right at $46.9. That's several thousand under NADA average retail with no added options and just barely above low retail. And just like all of our used RVs, we guarantee all five slide outs to go in and out like they're supposed to. We guarantee both air conditioners to get to operating temp. We guarantee the refrigerator freezer to get to operating temp. And all that's included for that low price with no added fees. $46.9 plus applicable sales tax. That is, of course, like all of our prices, haggle-free, firm, non-negotiable. Doesn't matter how you pay for it or how far you come to get it. That's what it takes. If you need delivery service, guys, we do have, uh, again, $1.50 one way or a loaded mile. So, in other words, if you live a 1,000 miles away, even though it's a 2,000-mile round trip from a driver, with us paying all expenses, we charge you $1,500. And that's for everything gas, uh, paying my driver, uh, hotel rooms, all that stuff included, $1.50 a mile one way. And if you're interested in delivery, give us a call. Uh, we'll get every, you know, we'll sell it to you and get all the delivery set up. You're welcome to come and look at this thing, guys. You know, we only sell these things with a basic inspection, everything else is sold as is besides the slide outs, the roof airs and the refrigerator freezer. So you need to come look at it. Everything's winterized, but you can come look at it. We'll plug it into power. You know, I can honestly tell you besides the things we guarantee to work, the fireplace works, uh, lights work, the uh, furnace works great. <laughs> um, and of course you can come inspect everything else on top of that. And again, guys, this, this thing is priced when we sell it as is. We can't repair anything besides those systems that we cover those three things, the slide outs, refrigerator, freezer, and the roof airs. Anything else, if it's wrong, it's sold that way. Uh, I don't think that's really gonna be an issue with this one. Um, I think, um, um, you know, that's more warranty than and more guarantee than you get at most dealerships on a used fifth wheel. And our price is thousands less than other dealers too. So. Definitely save you some money and not charge you all those extra dock fees, prep fees, and processing fees, and happy camper fees, and more. And we do have financing available with approved credit and down payment. If you want to know the latest information about that, give us a call. Uh, my salespeople are more up to date on that as far as the latest terms and interest rates and percentage down. Of course, you know, it's always a good rule of thumb to pay as much money down as possible. Um, simply because you know whatever extra you pay down you're going to get back because that's less you got to pay off in the future when you sell it or trade it later on you know you know nobody keeps these things forever very few people keep these things to the loans paid off i mean most of the time they they sell them or trade them with a the payoff so to me it makes sense the more money you have from the get-go uh, as a down payment, the less you finance on it, that's the less you got to pay off when you sell it or trade it down the road. The more money you put back in your pocket, you know, I, you know, you want to have equity in one guys and, and trust me, you know, the more equity you have, the better put you in a better financial state, put not only that, but you're financing less payments less. So anyway, if you got questions about that, we do take trade-ins too, by the way. Uh, it doesn't even have to be an RV. It can be a multiple number of things, cars, trucks, and uh, boats, and motorcycles, and jewelry, and gold, and silver, and guns, and tools, and lawn equipment. We're not scared to put a number on anything we can get a value on. It doesn't even have to be an RV. And again, guys, delivery is available. Very cozy, cozy fifth wheel. I could see setting this thing up on some property somewhere or even living in it. And uh, man, this is, this is like a luxury apartment on wheels. 
especially you know you know a lot of people don't realize you know building costs are through the roof and so if you ever have elderly parents or in-laws that need to move back in because of their age or aunt and uncles or whatever and you know you, you want to give them some independence so you know you try to build a guest house for 46.9 you can't even get the foundation poured and the plans drawn up for 46.9 for a guest house you can park something like this next to your house if, if local ordinances and laws uh, allow it. Have them a nice place that's independent, you know, with their own bathroom, their own living room, kitchen, bedroom, storage, own heat and air, and all of that, guys. And like I said, you can't you can't even begin to even think about building a house, a small guest house for that price. You'll easily spend almost three times that, or, or at least double, building a little small guest house. And um, this one, heck, you're, you're there. You're good to go. And then, you know, when they eventually move out, you've got something you can buy, sell, or, or you can sell, trade, or finance, or whatever you need to do with it. Same way, you know, you, you get coming out of college, kids coming out of college, need a place to live. Why should they go out? Or why would anybody want to go out rent an apartment, live in it for two years, or three years, or four years, or whatever, and... I mean, heck, guys, even, you know, even though we've got low housing prices around here, or at least relatively low compared to the rest of the country, how dark it is outside just that quick. Um, even though our, our housing, you know, rent, rent prices down here, I mean, you're going to spend $1,500 just for a small house to rent per month down here and $1,000 for an apartment. I mean, so basically, you say you rent a small house for three years, and you move out to move to somewhere else, you've got nothing to show for those three years. You just have just a roof over your head and the memories of that. You can take that money you're going to apply to pay rent for three or four years, buy something like this and own it lock, stock, and barrel, and have something that you can finance, something you can trade, something you can sell, and get cash back. So, different ways of looking at it, guys. Now, is it cheaper to live in a fifth wheel than living in a small, say, efficiency apartment per month? No. I'm not going to lie to you. Time you pay lot rental, upkeep and maintenance on your fifth wheel, insurance, you know, uh, you know, during the, during the winter time, you know, you're going to go through some propane. That stuff's not cheap, you know, to run your furnace. And, you know, and that's what you want to use for heating because... With an enclosed underbelly, the only way you're going to keep your pipes from freezing is to run your propane furnace when it gets below freezing. Now, if it's above freezing, you, you can leave your furnace off and run some low wattage heaters in here, but just be very, very careful about not going over your um, amperage allowance for heaters. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to short out anything. Now, if you take in all that in consideration, you know, it's probably now if you're if you're living in a city, of course, you're going to save money over an apartment rental. But if you live out in rural areas like we do, of course, you can rent a apartment cheaper. But at the same time, buying one of these and making payments on it versus renting an apartment, at least you're putting sort toward your money towards something that's yours. This fifth wheel, something you can again. It's yours, you're keeping, instead of giving a landlord the money, you're, you're paying yourself the money, you're paying the bank back the money for something that you're going to own when it's paid off. So that's a great way of looking at it, I think. Uh, a lot of people are doing it, um, living in RVs, and, you know, if you do it right, there's nothing wrong with it at all. But, and again, you know, I've made this recommendation before. I know a lot of people are looking at housing prices right now and saying, I, you know, they could get so much money for their house if they sell it, buy a fifth wheel, live in it for several years till the real estate market crashes or sooner, and then buy a house for 50 cents on the dollar, what it would have brought today. And that's a great idea. But I do not recommend full timing in a fifth wheel or any type of RV without some kind of experience using one recreationally because so many people have done that and lived to regret it because they hate it you know i've i bought more than one rv back from somebody that bought one brand new sold their house bought a brand new 
camper, a brand new fifth wheel and lived in it, stayed about three weeks in it, four weeks and hated it. Now they got to go back and buy, sell their, sell their new camper because it's used after that for a loss and then go buy a house. And of course, you know, they can't buy anything for what they sold theirs for like they had. So, uh, winds up costing them a lot and especially if they got rid of all their stuff they got to buy all new furniture and everything else so all that you know that's a lot to consider so i i do recommend having experience recreationally with an rv before buying one to live in with absolutely no idea what you're doing um and it may work out for some people most people it won't and I'm just telling you from experience and talking to customers that it's a huge, huge adjustment um, to a sticks and bricks house. But it can be rewarding at the same time if you know what you're doing and doing it right. So anyway, guys, if that makes sense. Uh, if you like this video, guys, let me know. Smash me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share on social media. Um, I'm just trying to give you information. You know, guys, I'm not trying to dis discourage you from doing anything. If you want to buy one of these to live in, by all means, if you if you really want to do it, then go ahead and do it. I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm just trying to give you all the information. You know, most people on RV, reviews RVs, want you to buy, buy, buy. I want you to buy if it's right for you. If it's not right for you, I don't want you to buy it, if that makes sense. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not one of them that... I don't want somebody cussing me out a month later saying, I wish I'd never bought that thing. But, you know, you talk me in, if I have to talk you into it or a salesperson has to talk you into buying something, then you're not ready to buy. You know, that's the way I look at it. And, um, you know, you have to consider all the information before you make an informed decision. That's, you know, that's one reason why you go to my website and I've got way more details and information than any other, probably any other RV dealership's website. I've got all that pictures. I have exact measurement specs factory sales brochures, the video tour course, and more on my website, parkwayrvcenter.com. I'll put a link in the video description below. So, you know, do your homework, guys, before making any big decision like this. And it's like the old saying goes, there's no such thing as the right deal on the wrong RV. So, you know, look at a few, have fun with it. Picture yourself living in it. And uh, if you're going to, that's what you're going to do, or if you're going to use it recreationally too. And uh, it's a great way to buy a nice used one for under fifty. I mean, this thing's a hundred thousand dollars or more new. I'd rather risk forty six nine than a hundred thousand dollars for something that I'm not sure if I'm even going to like. So at least something like this, I know I can, you know, I can a year from now I can resell it and get my money back or most of my money back if I resold it myself. And so versus that versus buying a new one that'd be worth eighty or be worth seventy five or eighty grand next year. So anyway, hope I gave you something to think about. Thank you again for watching. We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, do take trade ins and again delivery service available. Financing available with approved credit, down payment, no extra fees. Uh, we don't mark interest rates up on financing. Uh, pretty much everything other dealers do to get you to overpay by thousands on top of the advertised price, we don't do. Well, we've been in business 54 years, guys. That's why we sell five to 600 used RVs a year. Our prices in our straight, forward, easy, simple, and done sales approach. Hackle-free prices, no surprise fees, just plus applicable sales tax. No games, no gimmicks, no upsells. We're not going to cram warranties down your throat. Not going to do gap insurance any of this stuff you can do all that after you buy the rv if you want to on your own for cash for a fraction of the cost what a dealer is going to charge but mo i gotta warn you most of it's not worth the paper it's written on so you know, always say say no to upsells if you finance it keep pay as much money down as you can keep your amount financed as low as possible thank you so much for watching i appreciate it and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful ringgold georgia